Good evening, my friends. It is Thursday night's late night agenda. And as always, we have scoured through the day's newspaper and media stories to give you the latest updates surrounding Liverpool's search for midfielders. Today, of course, we're going to be focusing mainly on Alexis McAllister and Manuel Ugarte, as well as a few other bits and pieces. I'm going to give you what we know, but you know, I want to know what you know and what you think. So let me know in the comment section. Do drop a like on the video, and of course, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, please do. So look, I'm not going to hang around today. I'm not going to pitch it or sell you anything. I'm going to get straight into the news stories. And there is a, a bit of a collection of highlights or headlines we brought together for you around the Lexus McAllister, just to give you a flavour of what is being said in the media. So, Paul Joyce has said that he is high in Liverpool's, uh, Liverpool's list of targets. Fabrizio Romano has said Liverpool will push in the next few weeks and have presented the project and financial proposal to the player. Liverpool are stepping up their interest, said C. Parker Turner, and Matteo Moreto said Liverpool are in pole position. Now look, what's going to happen on this one will probably happen quite quickly. I would imagine, as Fabrizio said, May, June, Liverpool want this sorted quickly, and I do feel like that this is a deal that can get done early doors. Uh, Brighton are understandably sad to be losing him, but they are understanding of the situation, and it's been known for a while that he's going to leave in the summer, so it was just a matter of who and for how much. Now, it does look like Liverpool have put themselves in pole position, but we still need to get it done. It's no surprise to me that the appeal of working for Jurgen Klopp coming to play at Liverpool is, is one that is... Um, exciting to Alexis McAllister I'm sure World Cup winner coming to Anfield I mean it's been quite a year for the man and I think it's a great fit I said it yesterday to you guys I've still got no idea on a fee I've seen numbers ranging from 50 to 60 million quid look let's wait and see what it comes down to but as a fit as the right type of signing I think it's spot on and I think it's one that we should get excited about and one we should get right behind doesn't take much to see how he can slot into Liverpool's system and it's one of these signings that if it happens I just think yep yeah, no arguments no complaints no notes Jürgen just just go ahead with it and um, with that in mind there are a couple of bits and pieces that say that Liverpool could be looking to focus that midfield search not in Europe not in the Bundesliga not in the Portuguese Premier League but in the Premier League and that kind of got me thinking a little bit fair enough saying that and I think it was Neil Jones that put out today uh, that Liverpool are looking to you know keep that search towards the Premier League but the defensive midfield position, that's where I come a little bit unstuck with this. Because I'm alright if we're looking at Premier League signings. I'm alright if we're looking at Lavia. I'm alright if we're looking at um, Alexis McAllister. I was even alright to a certain degree if we were looking at Mason Mount and a few others. But what I'm a little bit stuck is, where's the defensive midfielder going to come from? If we're focusing on our search just around the Premier League. Because I can't think of one. I can't think of one that one I'd want and two that we're going to pay the money for. I mean, I could say Declan Rice to you. I could say he could come in and anchor the midfield, but we're not going to pay the money for Declan Rice if we weren't going to pay it for Jude. So, yeah, maybe maybe there is a little bit of truth to that. But I also do think that the stories coming out around Ugarte from the Portuguese side are, are true. And I think there's a lot of sense to them. So I'm going to read you through uh, the latest that we have for you guys coming from our friends at LFG Transfer Room. They have said, as a reminder, uh, at B underscore Cookman broke the Darwin Nunes story a long time ago nobody believed him at the time but everything he came out with ended up as being on point now what relevance is this well he's the gentleman that is talking about Ugarte and Liverpool's interest in him so he has said that uh, it's okay from the management side about a move into Liverpool they understand it's a big move they still want to get the transfer fee sorted out the player is sold on the project loves the idea of coming over and playing with Liverpool but ultimately the decision won't just rest in the players hands it'll be at the higher ups at Sporting now what we do know is apparently as a 60 million euro release clause in a sporting contract now it's not like Liverpool to just go in and pay release clauses right you know we're not Chelsea we're not Manchester City we tend to try and do things the hard way the cheap way and the fiscally responsible way so I fully do expect Liverpool to try and strike some type of an agreement with sporting maybe we end up agreeing to the 60 million euro but not in one lump sum which is usually what you have to do to if you're going to buy a player out of his contract and pay the release clause you usually have to go in some cases to the FA uh, the Portuguese FA pay the money in one lump sum that then frees up his register registration Liverpool can go and sign the player then but Liverpool will probably want this structured over the length of his contract so yeah I'd say maybe get close to the number but it's how it's structured I think will be the uh, the difference maker between this deal possibly happening and not happening now look I'm all for it I think at 22 years of age um 
with the experience he has already playing for sporting and the undoubted talent the kid has, I'd be all for it. I really would. I think it'd be great if you could bring him in, you could bring in Alexis McAllister and add one more body, be that a Thuram, be that a Barella. I, I don't know who it could be, but it's starting to get exciting because it's starting to look like these things could be possible and these things could actually happen. And I do expect the Alexis McAllister one to come along quite quickly. Um, so Neil Jones also speaking about Ugarte and Florentino Luis. And as I said, his report is that Liverpool's primary targets uh, are focusing on recruiting from the Premier League and not the likes of Ugarte and Florentino Luis of Benfica. Uh, James Milner has been confirmed as going to join Brighton in a free transfer when his contract at Liverpool expires in the summer. No real surprises there. We've been telling you guys about that all week as well. Um, and a couple of other bits and pieces that I just want to finish up on here as I go through my notes. So... Fabrizio Romano has said Liverpool have presented their project and financial package to Alexis McAllister. The club will insist in the next few weeks on things moving along. Discussions advancing, but no deal done yet. McAllister 100% leaves Brighton in May. Uh, James Pearce has been speaking about Klopp and Pep Linders. He said Klopp and Pep Linders have reportedly urged Darwin not to be so hard on himself, reassuring him that they're happy with his progress that he's making and that they always viewed Darwin as the long-term project. Now, I'm glad to hear that. Because some of our fans are getting a little bit a little bit carried away with the idea of him maybe not progressing as quickly as they had in their minds. And ideally, yes, a player would come in, hit the ground running, score a bag load of goals. We can compare him with a Haaland and we're all happy. But that hasn't happened. And that's okay. You know, Darwin is a project. It will take time. And as I've mentioned on many of our news, show, or, uh, news shows lately... I'm really happy with his progress, but I'm even happier that we're able to give him this time to progress and get used to the system because Cody Gakpo's worked so well, because Diaz is now back fit and available, and of course because the great Mohamed Salah continues to score and assist goals. So, good. Well done. Good thinking from Klopp and Pep Linders, and it should be a long-term thought, a long-term project, because if it works, and I think it will, if you can join all these dots and put all the facets of his play together, you are going to have one hell of a footballer there. One hell of a complete footballer. So yeah, I, I agree with Klopp. Don't be so hard on yourself, Darwin. Keep doing the things you're doing well and keep working away on the other stuff and it'll all come together. So before we finish up, one last bit. Uh, and that is about Liverpool's links with Southampton's Romeo Lavia. And they're hotting up according to various sources in the UK. So keep an eye on this one. Uh, he will likely want to leave according to LFC Transfer Room if Southampton and get relegated so look I don't know much about the kid uh, over to you guys to let me know if you think he is potentially of Liverpool's standard or not I can't say I've watched a whole lot of Southampton this season if I have cast an eye on them it's usually to see how Gavin Bazunu was getting on between the sticks you know him being an Irish keeper and all so yeah Lavi at another one link but what I would say is I agree with most of what Neil Jones has been saying, but I do think there could be some truth to the uh, to the stuff around Ugarte because it makes sense, right? Obviously, we've got Darwin who could have a word in his ear, right age profile, right position that we need, and somebody that could fill the position for the next five, six, seven years if it works out. So exciting times ahead. Let's wait and see what happens. It looks like uh, you know who's moved to Real Madrid could be moving along a little bit as well, but we're not going to mention him anymore. You know, he's he's dead to us at this point, unfortunately, very sadly. But that's it for me, my friends. I will be back later on with a preview because, believe it or not, it is time for a preview ahead of the Brentford game already. The games are coming thick and fast at the end of the season, so do keep an eye out for that on the channel. And let me know if there's any players you'd like us to maybe profile or take a look at um, that you think Liverpool should be looking to do business with in the summer. So, again, it is over to you, my friends. Drop a like on the video. Hit that subscribe button for me. And, again, thank you so much for your continued support. Much love. Bye-bye.